so is it possible we can detect anomalies in in space time? Well, you you could detect, and there's there's been some work on this, like with the Akubre drive, you know, these the proposals for warp drives, and we can talk about that later. I'm, I'm skeptical of those, but um, because it may really be possible, you just can't go faster than the speed of light. But people have done work on like you know what would be the s- signature of uh, an Akubre drive? What would be the signature? Like, you know, could you detect if you're using a drive like that, then you certainly are distorting space time, which means any light that's passing by has gotten, mm-hmm. you know, the, it's, it's, it's trajectory has gotten altered because it had to pass through the distorted space time. So yeah, there are possibilities along with that. You know, one of the funny things, I don't know if they've gotten past this, but somebody calculated the problem with the Akubre drive or this warp drive was that if, if you dropped out of warp, there would be this spray of gamma rays that would like sterilize any planet in front of you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, yeah. Yeah, you probably don't want to do that, but that would be a great bios or techno signature. <laughs> Another planet obliterated. So you think it's not possible to travel fast than the speed of light? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. But what I think, you know, if you look at the physics we understand, right? Yeah. Um, the, you know, every possibility for faster than light travel really relies on something that doesn't exist, right? So, so you know, the cool thing is Einstein's field equations, you can actually play with them. The equations are right there. You can add things to the, you know, right or left-hand side that allow you to get something like the Akubre drive. That was a metric that, uh, you know, showed you like, oh, it's a warped bubble. It's a warping of space-time that moves through space-time faster than the speed of light, right? Mm-hmm. Because nothing can move across space-time faster than the speed of light, but space-time itself can move faster than the speed of light. But here's the problem with all of those proposals is they all need something. The thing you added, the little fictional term you added on the into the equations is something called um, exotic matter, and it doesn't exist. It's really just something we dreamed up to make the equations do what we wanted them to do. So, you know, it's a nice fiction, but really right now, you know. You know, we live in this weird moment in history of the great acceleration where like uh, the technology we use now is, you know, is completely different from the technology we used 10 years ago is remarkably different from the technology from a hundred years ago. Um, but you know, I remember playing, um, uh, Assassin's Creed where everybody's like, you know, what is it? It's 1200 and everybody's like stab, stab, mm-hmm. stab. And I was like, yeah, it's a great game. And then I got Assassin's Creed two and, uh, it was 300 years later and everybody's like stab, stab, stab. And it was like 300 years and the technology hadn't changed. And that was actually true for most of human history, right? You used your great grandfather's tools because there was no need to have any other new tools. And you probably did his job. Uh, So, you know, we can be fooled into thinking like, oh, you know, technology is going to go on forever. We're always going to find new advances as opposed to sometimes things just flatten out for a long time. So you have to be careful about that bias that we have living in this time of great acceleration.